Anyway, so it's the second day of the event, Sahara Sparks. Hopefully you had a great time yesterday. We're about to have a greater, greater, greater time. Now, I'm very excited about a couple of groups I'm going to be seeing later. But before I reach to that part, let's give you a short, small recap of what happened yesterday. You remember the group, Sajana? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite group? Uh, the women in technology. Ah, why are you taking the women part? Because I think it's usually, uh, they usually have a great discussion around women in technology because it's, it's a burning story. It's an interesting story on how women can inspire. We saw Lillian. She inspired almost everyone. Yeah. And uh, we, we saw other champions on how, what they've been doing to you know, inspire and, uh, more, pe more women into you know, uh, doing these innovations and technology and entrepreneurship in the country. Is Mihai around? <laughs> now, that's the man who left a mark in my head yesterday. Mihai! He, you remember the guy, right? Yeah. He was very practical. I said, listen, Mimi, I don't believe in what you said. What you said, this is what I know. This is the fiscal issue, and this is what he was supposed to do. I remember that guy. Another group that I liked the most was the last group. They Easy. talked the longest part, mm -hmm. but they had a great point to elaborate yesterday. Yeah. Now, today, we also have a couple of other groups. The first group is very, very interesting. They, they will show us how to create or generate a better community by providing ICT, innovation, by collecting data. I'm trying to collect a couple of their names and put them together. Like in, all in the name of making a greater community. At the, at the same time, we also have other groups. Not only from here, we have other people from Kenya also going to be presenting. And we also have other people as well that come all the way outside from Africa that are also here today. They're going to be with us. But we also have sponsors. Yes, we do have sponsors. Thank you to DMM.Africa, who is our platinum sponsor. Thank you to our other sponsors, the Finnish Embassy in Tanzania, the Swiss Embassy in Tanzania, HDIF, Microsoft, and Omedia Network. And thank you to everybody who was spreading massive love online yesterday. I reached home around 6, and I saw a lot of pictures. I saw a lot of you guys. There are new guys, of course, today, but I saw the conversation online was too much and too great. Sahara Sparks was trending on Twitter. It was very, very extra on Facebook. I'm not too sure about Instagram, but it was all over yesterday. Big, big, massive round of applause for yourself. We took a massive selfie yesterday. Yes. I think it's the biggest selfie this building has ever seen. Maybe in Limani City. So we said come by yesterday. We had a great time. Today, let's make it legendary, right? Sabu ni sketu ya mwisho leo. Na kuna ndugu zangu walikuwa nalamika na sema, da, siku pita kuna pitching pale, so I won't be able to pitch. You know what, let me tell you something. You might, God might be giving you a sign that you might not be ready today. Like in the next year, when you come, you might be in the pitching panel, and kajikuto na propose ideas zako, and maybe 10 or 5 investors might want to buy your ideas. So it's good, you might not be part of the system, but unazo kajifunza from what other people are going to be doing today. So let's the beautiful event begin. Begin. Yes. Now, inviting on stage, Apa, the man himself, Mr. Man CEO. Man of the hour, man of the house. Jimanim Tembalike, round of applause for him. Mr. MD. <laughs> J4. Morning, guys. I'm not a Wheezy fan, I'm a Techno fan. <laughs> okay, so, um, I have issues with serious people. Life is already too serious for you guys to be serious. You don't have to be serious. Welcome back to day two of Sahara Sparks 2017. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so we are going to have a very amazing um, day two of Sahara Sparks 2017. This is what happened yesterday. <laughs> I didn't know I'm this handsome. <laughs> So uh, thanks to Kage 15, K15, amazing pictures, more than 400 amazing pictures. So anyone who needs those pictures, we're going to make them public on their portal so that you guys could get some of your pictures so that you can look how handsome and beautiful you are.
yani zile picha mzee atali yani sawa so uh, getting back to day two, our first panel discussion will be about how innovation and technology can be used to impact the community i'll be having some amazing speakers but before that one of the questions we've been asked so far is like what are the main things that sahara spark does is event the only thing we do every time i tell people that event is not our core business events is our advertisement platform but actually um what we do is okay this happened last year it's happening again the creaker is not creaking Guys, I thought we are going towards smart solutions. <laughs> okay, so let's go in all the traditional ways. Back in 2001, next slide. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so yesterday we discussed about so many things. We talked about startups and what are they doing for the for the for the African community. We talked about technology. We talked about smart cities. You remember the great presentation that Edward Anderson gave. We talked about gadgets, innovative mobile solutions. I think you remember the presentation that Lillian gave. Um, today we're going to talk about. Today we are going to talk about uh, how ICT is used to impact and create value to the communities. We are going to talk about tech hubs and the general tech ecosystem, digital inclusion. We're going to talk a bit about entrepreneurship. And the most amazing part will be this afternoon, the investor pitching session. When you pitch to the guys with money, are you ready for the investor pitching session? Yes. Okay. Um, again, I would like to appreciate the support we've been receiving from our partners and sponsors. The biggest one are DMM.Africa. Could we clap for these guys? Um, Swiss Embassy Tanzania, Finnish Embassy Tanzania, the Omedia Network, Human Development Innovation Fund, and Startup Board. So, if, if, if you own a startup, if you run a startup, then you should be able to know this. Usually, it's very difficult to be able to define your startup in the first 18 to 36 months and tell people what you're doing. It's very, very difficult because constantly the definition of your startup is kept on evolving. Yeah, for those who usually work with me and I give them feedback on the ideas back at Boonies, they'll know this. Um, a function of a good startup is composed by five variables. So until you get those variables right, you cannot give a definition to your startup. I don't wanna turn this into another startup whatever session, but I have to say it. So the first thing is the idea that you're working on. So I've already figured out the idea what I want to work on. I want to work on creating impact using innovation in ICT to support the communities, but also to build a business around it. The product, I'm going to create multiple acceleration programs targeting different sectors, looking to transform the ideas into early stage company. The team, I already have an amazing team, brilliant team. My team, I wish that you could all see them. You have seen some of them yesterday. It's a very big team. And our average age is less than 32 years old. So it's the present and the future of Tanzania. Could you clap for these guys? <laughs> and um, I said five variables. Another thing is timing. So this is the right time. We feel this is the right time that technology can be used to impact the community with the growth of the mobile phone network, investment in the technology sector. We have nine mobile network operators in Tanzania. I will not go to the content side. If you remember the kind of content we are consuming according to Mihayo yesterday. <laughs> okay. So, and finally, is the execution. 
I think we are still searching the execution, but we believe we're going to have a perfect execution. So if you want to build a great startup, work on your idea, on your product, on your team, on your timing, and your execution. So Sahara Venture is a group of companies composed by three companies, Sahara Sparks, which is an event management company, Sahara Consulting, which um, do consulting works for impact projects, and Sahara Accelerator, which we launch sometime next year, which will be a visual platform for accelerating startups online. I'm here to talk about the projects that we are doing with other partners that create value to the, to the, to the community. The first project is uh, Mawazo Challenge. There is a Data Zetro project, Hatua project, and a Moo Accelerator. So I will call on stage all the project managers of this project that we are currently involved in so that they can share their experience. And all these projects are looking at creating value to the young people using ICT and innovation while supporting other key development sector programs. So the first project is Mawazo Challenge. I'll play a small video of Mawazo Challenge so that you can have a glimpse of what it is. The fact that I want to see an impact on the health of the community is what basically influenced me to pursue medical studies. It has always been my dream to make an impact to this thing called life. It is a precious gift given to every human being. The feeling that you get when you save a person's life, that is what is keeping me here. And that is what I'm striving for. My name is Harriet Peter. I'm a second year student at Mimbili University. My name is Yonani. Hi guys, I'm Natasha from SKMU. I'm an MD4 student studying at Mimbili University of Health and Allied Science. I wish most of the medical people or non-medical people to participate in the competition, it's very helpful in both in our health sector and all the youth. The Mawazo Challenge gives you an opportunity to put those ideas into practice and into action. It came at the right time to help us all. So if you have a research, an article, anything, please don't hesitate to apply. Um, the medical students are going to get an opportunity to explore their ideas and apply them to improve the health of the people. The new scope for the medical students uh, who are really eager to make and advance the medical uh, services here in Tanzania. The perfect idea which came at the lifetime, which will help our students to transform our ideas into product. I believe we as medical students have a lot of ideas and potential and we want to be of, of help in our community. So I would encourage all medical students to apply for this project. It is a good platform for we medical students to be able to interpret our ideas and bring them into actions. So I'd like to call upon my fellow medical students to apply. I need you to take part because if not you, then who can take it? Because if you can do it, nobody's going to do it for you. Many of what we want, projects, ideas, researches, turn into action. Please apply and be part of it. Woo. So I would like to call on stage uh, the project manager of uh, Mawazo Challenge, Mr. Ismail Biro, please welcome on stage. So I will not say what is Mawazo Challenge or what the project is trying to do because we'll, I will have a conversation with this gentleman later. So another project which we are involved in is called Hatua Project. It's all about using ICT and uh, technology to promote good governance.
Good governance is often expressed through factors such as reliability, accountability, transparency, predictability, responsibility, responsiveness to the needs of the people. We are actively engaging young citizens through hackathons and other related events, encouraging them to innovate for a better Tanzania, innovate for change, innovate to promote good governance. Think about the chairman in your village, think about Nyumbe, how can, how can technology enhance ule utaratibu au luma ambazo anatoa on day-to-day -day basis? The tour project is designed to create in, and innovate disruptive and frugal technologies to support the government efforts in taking the most effective steps to strengthen good governance with the application of technological solutions targeting Tanzanian citizens from diverse communities. Good governance issues are issues that you face on a daily basis. Barabara Society is Maribika. How do you address these issues? How do we use technology? How do we come up with tools or uh, platforms that can address such issues? That is basically what we do. <laughs> Welcome on stage, Mr. Bazir Malaki, project manager for Tour Project. And Data Zetu, before I make a mistake at the end, Adrian is not a project manager of Data Zetu. He's somehow involved in the project. I appear to be the capacity director of the project, but it's an amazing project. And uh, wow. Adrian, I didn't know you're this handsome. Um, please come on stage, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the last but not the least project that we're involved in is called Hamoa Project. We're doing it with uh, UNFPA. And um, yeah, there's a video to give a glimpse of what it is and what are we looking to achieve. in this project will be in teenage pregnancy. The Hamoa Accelerator Project intends to support young entrepreneurs through mentorship with seed funding, training and skills development to generate innovation solutions in response to challenges related to sexual and reproductive health. Kama ni youth ni wa ni youth friendly services. Yeye sasa na bidii labda kurudi nyuma kama sisi tunaweza kuwasaidia to frame mawazo in terms of friendliness of services. Show your sustainability plan. This is a short term project. Ukipata seed money ile inakufanya tu kwamba sasa ili wazo lako limekubalika si ndio limeenda kwenye soko. Lakini baada hapo inakuwaje? Muona? So that sustainability plan is very important. So all these projects have one thing in common. They are targeting you, young guys. Fusa zipo zipo. 
What is valuable? Information or money? Information. So um, I'd like to call on stage the project manager of Pamua Accelerator, Mr. Adam. So uh, without wasting any further time, because I know there's a person who's feeling like killing me already. Uh, Adam, where are you? Please, have a seat. Um, these guys work with the community. They always go down to reach people. So sitting is not a good idea. Please stand up and let's make this short. Uh, every question will be responded within 30 to 40 seconds. Don't be a politician, go straight to the point. And this panel is too masculine. Mariam, please come here. So Mariam, she's involved in two of the projects we're involved in. She's involved in Mawazo Challenge, but she's also involved in a, a tour project. So very quick, very neat, very short about your project in 40 seconds. All right, good morning to all of you. Well, Mawazo Challenge is basically the program that seeks to address the health challenges in the community by giving the platform to the young people themselves to, be, to, to create the solutions and you know, introduce them to the, ch uh, to the community. But now the community also take the ownership and uh, look also for scalability so that it can be more sustainable. And so you've, you've seen that uh, uh, most of the people that have been uh, interviewed, uh, there's the students from the medical uh, institutions, but um, the, the, the instruction is that um, we are also encouraging young people who are not from the health and health, um, allied science uh, institutions to also take part in the, in, the, in the program. And so all innovators, you guys, I believe all of you here are innovators. So if you have any innovative solution to the health sector, you are encouraged to apply because we believe we are equally responsible to, to add something into the health sector in Tanzania. Um, so basically a tour project is uh, modeled as a learning event by making all voices count. So what we want to do is make sure um, all citizens uh, in Tanzania, we ensure that their voices are count through enhancing you know, uh, citizen engagement with their government. And how do we do that? Uh, we do that um, by you know, innovating technologies, working with different uh, young people, especially students, through the Boone Internship Program, as you saw, Boone is one of our partners in this implementation partner. So we work with Boone Internship Program to run a component of the tour project known as the Code for Citizen component. And basically what they do uh, in this component is uh, what Jumane was talking about, you not know, taking them through the processes of uh, starting a startup to come up with uh, social solutions to governance issues in a fair, effective, and efficient way. Mambo Vipi? Mambo Vipi? Okay. Um, to smart solutions. But how can we arrive to smart solution via kuana evidence based decision making? Uh, proper research. So why I'm standing here, I'm representing Data Zeto, which is a project that aims to help community to be to make informed decisions wakiwa na right data That's Data Zeto in short. So basically what uh, Amua is doing is a six month mentorship program to support young um, entrepreneurship with seed fund, um, training, and technology. Um, on sexual reproductive health, but with a specific uh, on teenage pregnancy. As you know, that is a problem so our program is basically trying to address challenges through challenges that are facing uh, teenage pregnancy. Okay, thank you so much for being short and clear. So technology is just a tool. Why do you feel this is the right time to use technology to impact the community? Anyone can take it. I can start. 
Um, again, nataka tuwe na smart solutions, ndiyo? Let me give you an example, practical one. Uh, mwaka kumbi na saba, uh, Kenya, jirani zetu hapa, walikuwa na post-election violence, ambo ililid kwa serikali kufungia medias, kutoa tarifa kwa jamii yake. Then ikaja ushahidi. Ushahidi so a problem. Kwamba jamii inashida ya kutoa tarifa, uh, giving out information to the community. Uh, Kenya nzima. So what they did, ushahidi, they brought out uh, a platform that allowed community to share what was going on in the ground. Like in case, maybe like in Kibera or Nairobi, there is a, there is a in incidence or like a, 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 route, a, a riot they are posting through this platform. Meaning now, the whole community in, in Kenya could now see what is happening in, 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 in different areas and they could take response. And also media now was informed through this platform. So the point here that we need this kind of solution, kind of in innovation. So we are citizens. We are not only responsive, but we are actually participating, all of us together, in bringing up solution that works for us through data and informed uh, decisions and informed research that we should be doing in the community. And, and just to add on that, um, Adam has talked of platforms. So what we basically use technology to do is to create platforms and tools because we know good governance is a technical process. And uh, you know, technology is not going to solve. Making applications, making mobile applications and web applications is never going to solve our problems. So we create platforms. And these platforms are meant to bridge the gap between the citizens and the, and the government. Um, yeah, so basically that is how we use technology uh, in, um, in my project. Yeah, just want to keep Yeah, so I imagine, you know, they say Africa is prone to many diseases health challenges, and then you come to realize that um, technology can easily simplify the access to the services. And I'm going to go with the examples. There's, a, there's an application in Uganda that is called Total Health, and then you know that um, sometimes many women are getting challenges to access the clinic and health services when they are expecting or when they deliver. And so such platform has already built the, 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 the platform for the people to you know, inquire some, some knowledge on how they can go about when, you know, like how, when they are expecting, but at the same time, how they can take care of the babies at the early stages. That is one. But the second thing, imagine now, um, most of the microscopics that have been used to, you know, to, 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 to diagnose ma malaria, now that um, most in the rural areas, they're not accessible. And now, Dr. Eddie Agbo, who is very prominent in Africa, has invented a new way to, to diagnose malaria using urine. And imagine now that um, people can, th and this is the first innovation that, uh, you know, like th that uses, uh, you know, like human urine to, to, to diagnose malaria, and then technology now takes part to make sure that uh, it, it checks whether this person is, is infected or not. And so what I see is that um, at the moment, technology comes at the, at the, at the very right time and innovation that um, when we thought that um, such things people needed to go to the hospital, now people can actually access such services when they're at home so that they, not, they don't need to, go to, tra to, to travel to, to on, on a long, on a long dis distance to, to, you know, like to, to get the services. And so for me, I see that um, innovation is, 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 is very taking the, the leading role in, uh, in helping the health sector in, in Mario African countries. very quiet. <laughs> Okay, um, so yeah. uh, Mariam, you're usually organizing the, the, the T4G, the Tech for Governance uh, meetups and, and, and forums. What are your key learnings? Why do you think is necessary to incorporate innovation and technology in a citizen engagement? Um, I believe it's important because uh, we, we, we're speaking of data, we're speaking of, uh, we're speaking of technology, we're speaking of how we can we can be more involved in technology. So th this, this is what I believe. Uh, there's a high chance that anybody who's buying a new phone now would buy a smartphone. Why? Because they want to be involved in different, uh, in different social medias or in different activities that you can do with a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So we've been speaking even yesterday about opportunities. So how do us as tech people use that as an opportunity to enter in different markets? Uh, governance being one of them. So how do we 
how do we improve the governance system in the country by using the simple technology? And by technology, we, we don't really mean it, it has to be high tech, even low tech technology. So how can we use that to improve good governance, for instance? So we're looking at uh, the kind of services we get to our Munikiti Wamta or to, you know, to this local government, uh, lo this local government, uh, Wajumbe, Sinani. So how do we use technology, simple technology, to enhance the services Zambago and Azitoa, look at, let's look at uh, maybe our voting system. So all these things is what we're looking at when we're trying to organize these forums. However, uh, we've had a lot of uh, involvement from uh, stakeholders except the government. So that has been like the biggest challenge to us because what we're trying, we're not, we're not, we're not uh, activists. What we're trying to do is just to use technology to enhance different services that are given to promote good governance. But then, you know, it has been hard for us to, to get the right people because now people are giving their views, but where's the government to accept this kind of things? Okay, 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 okay. I if want I to control one this. <laughs> <laughs> I say I don't want a politician here. I want us to go straight <coughs> on the point. So, each one of you, what has a very clear opportunity for young people who are inside here available in your individual projects. So what are the opportunities for young people in Mawazo Challenge? All right, so the idea is simple. We have called uh, for, for ideas right now. And what you simply have to do is to submit your idea that aims to tackle any of the health challenge in, in Tanzania. And it does not have to be medical because um, health sector is very diversified. Sometimes, you know, like even producing Nets, mosquito nets, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it aims to, to tackle the health challenge. Producing the reusable parts, that is, that is very relevant to the health sector. And so if you have any innovative idea that you think that um, when, it's, when, it, when it's introduced in the community can help to fill a certain gap, and also if the idea that, um, you know, like can easily fall under, you know, is uh, uh, it can be scaled up further to help the entire community. Such idea is worth investing. So if you have such idea, please submit it because the chances are you will go through the bootcamp opportunities whereby you will be trained on how you can refine your idea into something that can be very, very much useful to the community. But also you will be trained with skills on how you can sell your idea so that you can attract more investment in such idea. But at the same time, if you're lucky enough, you will be provided with a seed fund to start up your idea in a way that you're also connected to possible partners who will work together with you to take that idea further, but also help the community. And um, it's a very good opportunity because the government also has a very good buy-in in this, in, in this one. And so, who knows? You might be the next guy that we are gonna talk about next year that is working closely with the government, but also with potential Bigger, bigger investors in providing a certain solution to the Tanzanian community. So for me, I would really, really encourage you guys to take part in this program. Thank you very much, um, Ismail. So uh, what we're missing is the government buy-in because we're, because we're dealing with the governance, <laughs> but uh, I won't go there. <laughs> so the opportunities that are there, um, so I'll share the learnings because this is where we, um, I'm driving my opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of data. The government has a lot of data. We are dealing with budgetary data and all these kind of things. But then we lack data um, uh, uh, analysts and uh, activists. Because at the end of the day, we will produce, we will visualize this data, but now who is going to make sure the general public um, you know, accesses this data and even understands this data? So we need more. There's an opportunity for more young people to uh, consider being data activists and data analysts because there's a lot of data and that, is, that data is what we are going to use to influence most of these uh, governance uh, processes and in, in, in enhancing better governance, promoting good governance in Tanzania. Um, but then secondly, uh, we've been dealing with products, you know, coming up with uh, technologies, social interventions. Uh, the other opportunities that is there, there's a lot of funding. For those who were saying yesterday, like Mariam said, funding is not the problem. But then there's need for proper social solutions. If you're going to come up with these uh, technologies, they have to be proper because there are a lot of stakeholders out there who are looking for proper solutions that can create impact. But then 
do we have those uh, technologies here who are going to uh, output these proper technologies that can be funded? Because they're not just going to fund mediocre uh, outputs. Thank you. No collapse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, on my side, uh, what we have for the people in, in this room, I am seeing this room full of innovators, people who see challenges as, a, as opportunity. So what we have, we have a whole host of challenges that we are calling from the people. So we invite you guys who are innovators to come sit with us and together to come up with a solution to our own communities. That's number one. Number two is that um, we are looking forward to start creating some data with the community that are update and verified, hopefully, with NBS, because we are, they are our very close allies in this. We are working very close with NBS and Costec as well. So if you are looking for, for data to support your arguments for when you're going to uh, donors or funders, we can also sit down and help you guys with that uh, information as well. Adam, I'll connect you for, with the, the first question in the sense that this is an opportunity. It comes in two ways. First, um, the way we structure this project is it gives an opportunity for youth to be involved on their own problems. Because if you see, uh, traditionally, uh, development uh, program delivery, it has been on one way, that someone is designing a project, coming up with a solution, and go to deliver to the community. But with this, for example, specifically with the AMOA, we are asking youth to come up we, with the ideas that can solve the problems that they think has the problem with them. So this is the first opportunity that you are getting involved from the grassroots, from there, down there. The second one is that fact that you have an idea and it's been funded, I mean, you are, you, are, you are sure that at the end of the day, if my idea will be sounding, I'm going to have a seed fund. For example, in our case, we are going to provide $6,000 for every good idea that is going to win after, four, uh, after the end of the finalist. So this is an opportunity for you to come with ideas, the ideas that solve your problem, but there should be have an entrepreneurial background. You're going to win the, the seed fund. Wow. Isn't that a good news? Yeah, I'm still coming back, Jama. And I don't have sit on a killer idea and zuri. Oh, Jama, I don't have Billy me at all on a killer idea and zuri. Now you, man. Ah, I'm in the Kibisha one. And a pound, and a pound sterling. Billy me at all on a killer idea and zuri. So, Sasa, thank you so much, guys. Could we give them a bit round of applause? Thank you so much. This was a very interesting discussion. I can release you now. Sorry for making you not to say anything political. <laughs> so thank you so much, guys. I would like to return you back to Seba. Thank you, Seba.